surface anatomy of the head neck part b following topics are included in this video surface anatomy of the thyroid gland thyroid gland has two lobe connected by isthmus now surface anatomy of the isthmus first point laryngeal prominence second point jugular notch and third point in between first and second point isthmus is 1.2 cm vertically and transversely so draw two line above and below the third point for upper pool first point lateral end of the upper border of the isthmus second point anterior margin of the sternocleidomastoid muscle at the level of laryngeal prominence third point lateral end of the lower border of the isthmus fourth point 1.25 cm from the third point fifth point 2.5 cm lateral from fourth point join this line by curve line so this is lobe of the thyroid gland this is isthmus of the thyroid gland these are the related question asked in surface anatomy exam thyroid gland is an endocrine gland it has no duct and secretion pass through capillary it has two part parenchyma and stoma histologically it contain thyroid follicle and the follicle wall of the follicle is formed by the two type of cell follicular cell parafollicular cell and follicle contain colloid which contain secretion of the thyroid gland the follicular cell secret t3 t4 parafollicular cell secret calcitonin the parenchyma of the thyroid gland is developed from endoderm and stroma from mesoderm the follicular cell is developed from endoderm but parafollicular cell is developed from neural crest from ultimobranchial body surface anatomy of the parotid gland first point 1.25 cm from the summit of the tragus this is masseter muscle second point little above the center of the masseter muscle third point below and behind the angle of the mandible fourth point the tip of the mastoid process connect first second third and fourth point and now connect first and fourth point below the auricle so this is the surface anatomy of the parotid gland now the parotid duct first point tragus second point the midpoint between all of the nose and upper border of the lip join this line and middle third of this line is the parotid duct so this is parotid duct it is exocrine gland it has duct purely serous in nature it has two part parenchyma stoma the apex of the parotid gland is related with cervical branch of facial nerve and anterior posterior division of the rectomandibular vein base is related with temporal branch of facial nerve auricular superficial temporal vessels and auricular temporal nerve anterior border relation the zygomatic branch of the facial nerve the transverse facial artery upper buccal branch of the facial nerve parotid duct lower buccal branch of facial nerve and marginal mandibular branch of facial nerve and the posterior border posterior auricular nerve and posterior auricular vessels the structure present within the parotid gland from superficial to deep the facial artery recto mandibular vein and external carotid artery three branch of external carotid artery also present within the parotid gland the transverse facial artery maxillary artery posterior auricular artery histology of the parotid gland it contains serous acini 
and it contained duct. The staining of the Saracenae is more than the duct and the Saracenae contains cell with rounded nuclei. Development of the gland parenchyma is developed from ectodermal in origin and stroma mesodermal in origin. Opening of the parotid duct is the vestibule of the mouth opposite the crown of the second molar teeth. This is the summary of the question asked in the surface anatomy exam. Living anatomy of the frontal sinuses. This is glabella, this is nasion, it is the meeting point of the two nasal bone with the nasal notch of the frontal bone. And this is the supraorbital margin of the frontal bone. First point on the nasion, second point 2.5 cm above the first point, third point at the junction of medial one third and lateral two third of the supraorbital margin. Join this point. The frontal air sinus present within the frontal bone. Two in number. This is the size of the frontal air sinus. Lining epithelium, simple uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. It drains in the medial meatus. This is the medial meatus. Function resonance of the voice, lightening the weight of the bones and it present in the pneumatic bone. Surface anatomy of the maxillary ear sinus. The first point, the medial end of the infraorbital margin. Second point, lateral end of the infraorbital margin. Third point, on the alveolar process just above the third molar teeth. This is the third molar teeth. And this is the second P molar teeth. So fourth point on the alveolar process just above the second P molar tooth. So first point, second point, third point, fourth point, join this line. And this is the location of the maxillary ear sinus. This is the maxillary ear sinus just below the orbital cavity. This is the maxillary ear sinus. These are the related question asked in the surface anatomy exam. Which sinus of the body is the largest maxillary ear sinus? Which sinus of the body is developed first, maxillary air sinus. It is lined by the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. The function, the morphological type of bone contains sinuses. It date into the middle matters of the nose through the semilunar hiatus. This is the middle matters. This is the semilunar hiatus. And this is the opening of the maxillary ear sinus. How hiatus of the maxilla is reduced? It is reduced by the uncinate process of the ethmoid bone, the inferior nasal concha and palatine bone. How dental infection spread into the maxillary sinus? The dental root epixes are often directly adjacent to the maxillary sinus floor and respiratory mucosa. So infection of the tooth can be spread into the nasal sinus. The volume of maxillary ear sinus is 10 ml. Innervation by the superior alveolar nerves branch of the maxillary nerve provides sensory innervation. So this is all about surface anatomy of the head neck part B. If you like this video, please press the like button and please subscribe my channel. Thank you for